Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 24th day of June. And it's Monday, and this is the last full week of the month, and then we'll be going into the month of July uh, next Monday, a week from today. And today's topic is titled, Never Been Here Before, and Joshua 3, 4b is the passage, and we'll get into the whole book of Joshua chapter 3, or the whole chapter I should say, and read that chapter in its entirety and get a context for that and uh, all that. So uh, before we get started on uh, the um, broadcast today, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And if he is, hope you're serving him and living for him as you ought to be. I know we struggle with the flesh each and every day, and we need to keep it crucified and the old man uh, dead and buried, and allow the new man of the Holy Spirit to rule and reign in our hearts and our lives as we walk with him and talk with him and have a good relationship with the Lord and all that. So if you're not saved, well, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. If this was your last day on earth, and you died and stepped on eternity, would you go be with Jesus, or would you die in your sin? I uh, hope you're not rejecting Jesus any longer as your Savior, but you're going to put your faith and trust in Him today, that you're being convicted and convinced you need a Savior, and you can't do it your own way. And uh, it's only by God's way, through Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, and if there's any other way to get to heaven, then what Jesus did on the cross would have been in vain, but uh, we know that that's uh, not what happened, that that's the only way. And so whatever way you're trusting in, if it's not God's way, it's not the right way. So you need to turn from that way and turn to God and trust his son, Jesus Christ, who came down to this earth over 2,000 years ago and was born of a virgin and lived a holy, sinless life, which none of us can do. And uh, then he went to the cross and laid down his life. And then he was buried and rose again the third day, according to scripture, so we could be saved. So hallelujah for that. And so hope you'll trust him today. And if you're saved already, hope that this broadcast will be a help and a blessing and encouragement and edifying to you in some way. So, all right, let's go ahead now and get into the scripture song for today from Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Um, and it is Proverbs 17.22 today. So let's press play and sing along with them and then get into the topic afterwards. Proverbs 17.22 so A, a merry heart doeth with good with like a like medicine, medicine, but a broken, broken spirit drieth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. So let's have a merry heart. Amen. And uh, all that. And we'll put that back to yesterday's scripture song. And we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to get into today's topic titled, Never Been Here Before. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and look at Joshua chapter 3 in its entirety. And read this chapter here and get some context of what's going on in chapter 3 of Joshua. And so, if you have your Bible handy, you can turn along with me, and we'll read this chapter here, and then get into the topic afterwards. So, let's go here to Joshua chapter 3, and it has uh, 17 verses here. So, all of Joshua is a good book. Uh, the whole Bible is good. So, um, uh, let's go ahead here now and read chapter 3, and verse 1, it says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim, and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When ye see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place, and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by, me, uh, by measure, come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go, for ye have not passed this way heretofore. 
And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priests, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, when ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither, and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from uh, before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passeth over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of man, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass, when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, and as they, bear, or they, and as they that bear the Ark were come unto Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his uh, banks, all the time of harvest, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon and heap very far from the city uh, Adam, that is beside uh, Zaratan, and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people pa uh, passed over right against uh, Jericho. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood from, uh, stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan, and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. And then it continues on in chapter 4 and 5 and all that, so and you can read that, the rest of that on your own. So that's a little bit of the context of the chapter there. So now that we got that, let's go ahead and get into the topic here, titled never been here before for this 24th day of june 2024 monday again joshua 3 4b says that ye may know the way by which ye must go for ye have not passed this way heretofore and today's author is do that is the initials for uh, don owen i believe and he's retired san antonio texas and let me read you what he wrote here on this topic never been here before he writes, The Ark of the Covenant was to remind the people of God as they set out to cross Jordan and conquer the land. So it was to remind them, uh, the people of God, as they uh, set out to cross Jordan and conquer the land. Uh, they weren't to do uh, so in their own strength, but God's, right? So we shouldn't do things in our own strength, but in God's strength. For it was God who was going before them as their source of victory and even so today with us god goes before us and gives us the victory we are just told to watch and pray and and uh, stand and all that as uh ephesians chapter 6 uh says there put on the whole armor of god and so on and so forth all right so continue on it says does this serve as a reminder to us it should as we lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12, 1b and 2a. And uh, so let's go ahead and read the rest of that there, because that is good um, scripture there to get the rest of the context of Hebrews um, there. So let's see, what was that? Uh, Hebrews 12. So let's go there really quick and read the rest of that passage there. So Hebrews chapter 12, go 
there really quick. All right, so Hebrews 12, if I can get there. All right, so again, it says here in verse 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we are, or we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God, for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest he be wearied and faint in your minds. And, and the rest of the chapter there, so that was the first three verses there, good, good verses there. And now let's go ahead and continue on in the topic. So it says here, continuing on, uh, some are seeking a way for their ministry to go or to stay, to expand or hold firm for clear directions. Others may be facing personal burdens, the loss of a mate, a debilitating illness, betrayal of co-workers, wayward children, financial support, or a host of other issues. So whichever side you're on, keep on going. Uh, there is a seeming uh, river of impossibility, and, you'll, and you've never passed this way before. For some, it is the tyranny of... Or, uh, the, so for some it is the tyranny or uh, dominance of some habit. Could it be uh, in spite of your belief you are mastered by a passion? Uh, what hidden things need to be overcome in the power of faith? Uh, an unloving uh, spirit? Harsh judgments of others? Feeling easily hurt? Jealousy over the success of others? Uh, so those are all questions um, there. And it says, um, so, it says, it is often things like these lurking deep down in our lives that mar the blessing and act as barriers to personal revival. And he concludes with this, let us remember that we have never passed this way before, dot, dot, dot. So, and that's where he concludes it. And good uh, little topic there to take heed of. So. Uh, if you've never been this way before, you got to keep on going and trust in the Lord, and uh, He'll get you through it. So, all right, but don't quit, don't give up, and uh, all that. Amen. Okay, so that was a good little topic there from the Baptist Spread. And now let's get into the Daily Strength Volume 2 book as we are starting in on this new week here on the topic of hate. And we started it yesterday. This is week 21, and we did all the introductory stuff yesterday. And now let's get a, go ahead and get into this first topic for this week on this um, weekly topic on hate. And today is day 142, Monday, and it's titled God Hates. And we have Psalm 5.5, 5, and it says here, The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. So that's Psalm 5.5, 5, and let's go ahead and uh, look here. I believe this is a Psalm of David. So let's look here at Psalm chapter 5. and. And uh, get this here, so Psalm 5, and let's see, so 12 verses here, so let's go ahead and read the whole entire chapter here. And this is uh, Psalm 5, to the chief musician uh, upon uh, Nehiloth, a psalm of David. And verse 1 says, Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation, hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray, my voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, the Lord shall abhor the bloody and deceitful man but as for me i will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy and in thy fear will i worship toward thy holy temple lead me o lord in thy righteousness because of mine enemies make thy way straight before my face for there is no faithfulness in their mouth their inward part is very wickedness their throat is an open sepulchre they flatter with their tongue 
Destroy thou them, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against thee. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Wealth thou compass him as with a shield. So, amen. All right, so that's Psalm 5 in its entirety. And now let's go ahead and get into the topic here. Again, this is day 141 or 142 Monday, and this is titled God Hates in Psalm 5 5. We just read, and now let's get into the introductory thoughts. And it says, God hates. He sure does. He hates sin, and we should hate sin as much as he does, especially the sin that so easily besets us, as we just read in Hebrews uh, chapter 12 there, in verse 1. And so, God hates for those enamored by the teachers who strictly emphasize the love of God, this fact may be difficult to appreciate, yet it is both true and scriptural. In fact, the truth becomes even more peculiar when considering that God's hatred is founded within his love. According to 1 John 4, 8, God is love. He never ceases to be love, and if he did, he would cease to be God. Yet the Bible specifically points out that God also hates let the Bible speak for itself, and it will clear up any preconceived ideas. God uh, hates because he loves. God loves the righteous. Uh, therefore, he hates all workers of iniquity. Psalm 5.5 5 again. Uh, the Bible also points out that he hates the wicked and those who love violence. Psalm 11, uh, verse 5. Uh, those, or, excuse me, these truths are frequently Contrary to the common teaching by men who fail to consider the whole of Scripture and the depth of God, the old saying, God hates the sin but loves the sinner, apparently fails when considering the whole matter, right? God does, in fact, hate the wicked. Additionally, God hates wicked deeds and wicked doctrines, Revelation 2, verse 6 and verse 15. Each of us must ensure that we declare all the counsel of God and not con uh, convinced, uh, let's see, not conveniently uh, limit our understanding to only the most positive aspects. Acts 20 verse 27 is the reference there. So let's take heed of that, that God hates and loves at the same time, and he hates uh, uh, evil and wicked people and the wicked things they do, and he loves righteousness and righteous people, and and, of course, uh, Jesus is righteous, and when we get saved, we get his righteousness and all that. So, amen. Good uh, introductory thoughts there. And now for devotional thoughts for children. And of course, you can apply this to adults, too. And it says here, to hate something is to have an extreme dislike for it. The Bible points to some specific things that God hates in Proverbs 6, 16-19 and Zechariah 8:17. So let's look at those uh, passages there, and I'm sure you probably know these here pretty well, or hopefully you do. So Proverbs, let's see, what was it, Proverbs 6, so let's go there to Proverbs chapter 6, and look at this. Alright, so Proverbs chapter 6, and verse 16 through 19. Alright, so, verse 16 says, these six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. So that's uh, from Proverbs uh, 16 through 19, and then... What was the other one? Zechariah 8. So, Zechariah chapter 8. And look at this one here. So, these are just some things that God hates here. So, Zechariah 8 and verse 17 says, uh, let's see, so 8, 17 says, And let none of your, or let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against the, uh, his neighbor, and love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. So, 
Amen. And we should actually go back up here to uh, verse 16, which starts the uh, paragraph here. It says, uh, These are the things that ye shall do. Speak ye ever man the truth to his neighbor. Execute the judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And then verse 17 again says, And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And let, or, excuse me, and love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. So, all right, so those are some of the things that the Lord hates. And, uh, all right, now for everyone, devotional thoughts for everyone, that was for children. And now for everyone, it says, Why does God hate the wicked? Uh, why does he hate false doctrine and wicked deeds? Is it possible that this hatred is founded within his love? Can you explain how God hating wickedness helps to display his all-consuming love? How, um, how should the knowledge of God's hatred change the life of a believer? Should believers hate anything? Uh, where should the believer learn what to love and what to hate? So, good questions there. And, of course, we know it uh, comes all from the Bible and God's Word. So, amen. Good devotional thoughts there. And now for prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you grasp the truth that he hates. And then the second prayer thought is, ask the Lord to help you hate what he hates. And then the song from the book is titled, Tremble Ye Sinners. So, I did find an instrumental sampling for that song and i did pick a third song for today like i said i would do yesterday because i wasn't sure if there was going to be any full instrumental for any of these uh, hymns so the first hymn i could not find an instrumental to so we will do that one by reading the stanzas there and you might be able to find an instrumental for this one um later on down the road or find somebody to play it for you if you have a copy of this book or want to look it up online somewhere um, I couldn't find it on YouTube, though, but maybe there's somewhere else that has an instrumental that somebody did. So this is going to be Hymn 782 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is the first one on this topic of hymns, The Singing of the Saint, a spiritual song. And it's titled, In Thankful Songs Forever Bless. And this is written by George W. Anderson, who lived from 1816 to 1903. And it's from Greenwood's Psalm Psalmody. And it was 1838 when this uh, particular book was put out. And there is a story at the bottom of the page. So let me read you the three stanzas here. All right, so stanza one says, Now let us raise one last sweet song to praise the Lord, our heavenly King. Let every voice the notes prolong, while thus our Savior God we sing. Stanza two, Praise God the Father, whose rich love has given a place for humble prayer. Praise God the Son, who pleads above and gains us full acceptance there. And in stanza three, the Spirit, praise, who doth incline our hearts from sin to holiness. The Father, Spirit, Son divine, in thankful songs forever bless. Amen. Sounds like a good hymn there. I have to try to find an instrumental for that one day and come back and sing it. So that's the hymn. And now the story here at the bottom. It says, uh, at the bottom of the page here, it says, Born in Philadelphia, George was converted as a young man, baptized at the age of nine by T.T. T. Woolsey. Uh, he united with the Central Baptist Church in his hometown. Uh, and then graduating Madison University, he entered Hamilton Theological Seminary in 1844, completing uh, his studies. He edited the Baptist paper entitled uh, Christian Chronicle. He was ordained at 38, taking charge of the Northeast uh, Baptist Church in Dutchess County, New York, before removing to Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, to pastor the Lower uh, Merion Baptist Church. And it says he was subsequently appointed a literary editor of the American Baptist Publication Society and was an ardent uh, researcher and recorder of Baptist history in the United States and Europe. Hmm. He did a lot, a lot of stuff there. <laughs> All right. So that is the story about this man here. And uh, now the references. So stanza one, we have first, um, what is this? 1 Timothy 1, 17, 
and then first uh, Chronicles 16 at 23 and then stanza 2 is Psalm 5 3 and Romans 5 1 through 2 and then stanza 3 is Romans 8 16 and 2 Corinthians 13 14 so that's the end of the first hymn and now we're going to go all the way back towards the beginning of the of the hymn book here and do this second hymn and there was an instrumental sampling for this one so um, let me see here this is titled uh, tremble ye sinners and this is hymn 81 way back towards the beginning of the hymn book and this is one of these the judgment of god hymns a spiritual song written by isaac watts who lived from seven or 1674 to 1748 and then Griffith H. Jones, who lived from 1849 to 1919, and there is no story for this one, but there's five stanzas here, so we'll uh, do this. i got to do something here really quick, so i put the repeat on, make sure it repeats, so we'll listen to it first and then try to sing along with it, so here we go. this one but let me give you the references and then we'll move on to the third and final hymn for today so stanza one we have psalm 47 2 and um nahum 1 6 and stanza two we have isaiah 14 12 and isaiah 14 19 stanza three is jude verse seven and psalm 76 7 stanza four is james 4 6 to 8 and psalm 2 12 and then stanza 5 is Philippians 2.10 and Hebrews 12.29. So that is the end of the second hymn. And we're going to go ahead a little bit to the third hymn here. And the final hymn, which is Amazing Grace. And you all know this one pretty well, I'm sure. So this is a good one here. 
And let me go find the instrumental for this one, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. Do, 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 do. Let's see here if I can find the one. Alright, let's go back up to this one here. Uh, Alright, so try this one. Okay. Make sure that this is the right one. Trying to find one that doesn't got all this extra stuff to it, so just give me a minute there. Um, let's see here. So we don't want that one. Let's try this one. There we go. That's a good one. Alright, so this one's simple. It doesn't have all that extra stuff in it. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. This is Amazing Grace. And this is hymn 90 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is one of these, The Grace of God Hymns, a spiritual song, written by John Newton, who lived from 1725 to 1807. And this is a Columbian Harmony, uh, 1829, and then arranged by William uh, Walker, 1809 to 1875, and then arranged by Edwin O. X Excel, E-X-C-E-L-L. Edwin O. Excel, 1851 to 1921, and there is a little story here um, from this hymn, and uh, so let's go ahead and sing this. Might have to sing some of these a cappella, but let's start with the instrumental. So here we go. Like me, I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed through many dangers toils and snares i have already come tis grace has brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home the lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures yes when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease I shall possess within the veil A life of joy and peace 
peace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Hallelujah. Good hymn there. All right, now the story behind this hymn. It says here in Olney, uh, England, a granite uh, marker stands in a quaint cemetery of a rural parish um, engraved with these lines John Newton clerk um, once an infidel and libertine a servant of slavers in Africa was by the rich mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ preserved uh, restored pardoned and appointed to preach the faith he had long labored to destroy these lines are the sailor's testimony in song. And I encourage you to read about John Newton. I have a couple books about him and uh, William Cooper, or Cowper, um, however you uh, want to pronounce his name. It's actually Cooper, but it's spelled C-O-W-P-E-R. It's actually pronounced Cooper, and him and uh, John Newton were good friends and knew each other. So uh, I encourage you to read uh, stories about them and uh, their lives. So that is the end of the third hymn. And let me give you the references really quick, and then we'll move back on to the scripture songs for today and yesterday. So stanza one, we have Ephesians 2, 4 uh, through 9, and then 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. And then stanza two, we have Titus 2, 11. Stanza three is uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Stanza four is 1 uh, Chronicles uh, 17, 16, and um, Psalms 3, 3. And then stanza 5 is Psalm 73, 26, and Hebrews 6, 19. And then stanza 6 is 2 Peter 3, verse 10. So that's the end of the third and final hymn for today. And now I put this back to tomorrow's hymn, and we'll put that aside for right now. And do the scripture songs here again. And then we'll do some prayer cards and all that. But actually, let's go ahead and do the prayer cards first, and then we'll do the scripture songs. So... All right, so um, let me put on my VBS hat here. Amen. <laughs> so VBS is coming up here in a couple weeks, and got this hat here uh, for the VBS. So here it is. Here's my hat. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> put that on there. All right, so okay, so that's the VBS hat that I'll be wearing there. So okay, so let's do the VBS card here first, and then we'll do these prayer cards, and then scripture songs again so we have here the great jungle journey an epic cruise from genesis to revelation and this is the front of the prayer card and you can take a snapshot of that and uh, save that in your archives there so you can continue to pray for uh, this vbs coming up at the bible baptist church in deland florida and then that's the back of the prayer card with the qr code there and uh, so it says here uh, did god really create everything why do bad things happen was Noah's Ark real? Why do I need to be saved? Can I trust the Bible? At this VBS, your kids will explore the biblical answers to these questions as they set off on an epic adventure from Genesis to Revelation. Prepare to swing into fun as we head out on the great jungle journey. Amen. Uh, Tuesday through Friday, July 9th through 12th. And then it's from 930 to 12 daily. For boys and girls ages 5 through 15. And then closing ceremony is uh, and family festivities at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, July 12th. And then if you live in the area and you need uh, transportation, you can call this number here, 386-736-9274 for free transportation. And then you can register today at BibleBaptistVBS.MyAnswers.com. So if you live in the area, you can do that. So, and I'm um, going to be going out here after I'm done with the broadcast and going and putting some uh, these signs out around uh, um, the town. So, I pray for that, that these signs uh, stay up and nobody tries to take them down like they did last year. They had somebody that was very uh, um, angry with the Lord and didn't, didn't like uh, them being up around town. So, they took most of them down and 
took them, and then later on they uh, confessed what they did and uh, returned them. So praise the Lord for that. So hopefully they don't do it again that this year, and that uh, um, the word gets out, and um, parents will want to bring their children to learn about the Lord. So amen for that. So that's that um, there for the Great Jungle Journey VBS. So that's that prayer card. And uh, then we have here, let's uh, see here, let's do these uh, like this. All right, so the first prayer card I have here is for the uh, Stallman family. That's S-T-A-H-L-M-A-N, the Stallman uh, family. And they're taking the gospel to the world through Europe. And that's Matt and Kathy and then Benjamin and Amanda. And that's the cover, uh, the front of their prayer card there. So you can take a snapshot of that and save that. There, that's the front of it, and then the back of it, that's the back of the prayer card there. So that's that information. It says here, uh, uh, here in Matthew 9, 38, it says, Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Matthew 9, 38, and Macedonia World Baptist Missions, Inc. There, and then the back of the prayer card says, Serving as European and Middle East Field Director. And then it says here, our calling is recruit laborers to take up the responsibility of the Great Commission, prepare missionaries both practically and spiritually for service, assist missionaries in ministry efforts overseas, and minister to the personal needs of missionary families as they serve. And then it says visit www.gospel2europe, that's the number two, so www.gospel2europe.org to listen to our podcast and sign up for our newsletter. And it says Matt and Kathy uh, St Stallman, uh, 636-358-6365 is their phone number. And then we have Matt uh, Stallman at mwbm.org and then Kathy St uh, Stallman at mwbm.org is their phone um, um, information there on the internet and then we have macedonia world baptist missions p.o box 519 uh, brazelton georgia 30517 so 30517 and then memo matt uh, stallman there and then calvary baptist church campbell mo pastor joshua lovins l-o-v-e-n and then the phone number there is 573-246 Three two seven six. So that's their information there, and uh, then we have here Brother James and Sister Lillian Knox. That's the uh, pastor and his wife there at the Bible Baptist Church, and their prayer card there, and uh, so that's their picture there uh, that they have, and then the back of the prayer card here, and all the information on the back there. So uh, it says uh, James and Lillian Knox, Romans fifteen thirty. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit. That ye strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. So I'm not sure if this is the older prayer card or the newer one. Because I have two different ones for this one uh, for them. And we have here the Bible Baptist Church at jameswknox.org. Preaching and Bible Studies at youtube.com slash Sermons, And then we have the Deland School of the Bible. That's dsbkjv.com. And then Recorded Sermons and Book Publishing. That's store. Dot jameswknox.org and then the radio uh, broadcast here, the preaching of the cross both radio and video now and then Bible conferences and revival meetings is at jameswknox.org slash make sure we get the last uh, right slash there, speaking slash schedule so that's uh, how you can find that and then 872 Glenwood Road Deland, Florida 32720 and then that's Bible Baptist Church at gmail.com. And then the number is 386-736-9274 for the church information there and uh, all that. And then uh, next to last, we have the Trumpo family. This is their old prayer card. He was at the Bible Baptist Church uh, yesterday. He didn't have any new prayer cards with him, so I wasn't able to get a new one there. But this is the old one, and some of this information might be outdated. But he is still over there in the Philippines and I uh, gave a little update last night. So if you want to go back and listen to that, I'll um, tell you that that's at the church website, which I just gave you the um, information there. For that. So that's the front of their prayer card. And then the back there is the information there. Like I said, some of this information is out of date. So let me see here. Uh, this is the Trumpo family. 
missionaries to northern Philippines. And that's Michael, Amy, and then their children there. And that's uh, Apayo, A-P-A-Y-A-O, Apayo. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. And their sending church is Landmark Baptist Church at 2020 East uh, Henson Avenue, Haines City, Florida, 33844. And then the number there is 863-422-2037. Pastor is Mickey P. Carter. And then their correspondence and support address is Astatula Baptist Church, A-S-T-A-T-U-L-A, Astatula Baptist Church at 13239 Florida Avenue, slash P.O. Box 141, Astatula, Florida, Three two or three four seven zero five, and then the phone number there is three five two seven four two 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 one. Pastor Travis Lane, and then their field address is KJB Solid Rock Baptist Church, uh, San uh, Istro Sur uh, Luna. That I'll spell that for you. That's S A N. That's one word, and then the middle word is I S I D R O, and then. Sir is C U R and then comma Luna, that's L U N A, and that's 3813 Apayo, Philippines. And then we have KJB Philippines at yahoo.com. And then um, the contact information here is out of date, so uh, that. And then we have Luke 1423 says, And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled that's right so that's their information and then finally we have um, the Holtz and this is their newest prayer uh, card here and I'll show you that and then the bookmarker that uh, Sister Holt has so this is uh, uh, the Holtz this is their newest prayer card that they just put out yesterday and the QR uh, code there so that's their uh, front of it and then the back of it here that's the back of the prayer card there if you want to take a snapshot of that there and this is uh, Sierra Leone, West Africa, Stephen and Laura Holt, and Gathering the Fragments Bible Mission. That's gatherthefragments.com. And then the back of the prayer card says, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost, John 6, 12. And then their contact info is 386-624-8370. And that's statewide and WhatsApp on the field gathering or gather the fragments at outlook.com and then they're sending church of course is the bible baptist church again the address is 872 glenwood road deland florida 32720 386-736-9274 you think i'd remember this information as much as i read it <laughs> uh, pastor james w knox and then uh says subscribe to our field reports at gatherthefragments.com or scan the QR code on the front. So again, that's the QR code there. So that's our information. And then the uh, bookmarker here. I like that they do these bookmarker here because I have a lot of books. So that's the bookmarker there that Sister Holt made. And this is Laura Holt, um, Fra Fragments of Gold, a blog of personal lessons and stories gathered on the mission field. So that's the front of it. And then here's the back of it there, some pictures of her on the field there. And uh, then we have uh, subscribe at fragments, um, fragmentsofgold.com. So that's her personal blog there. And so amen for that. All right. So that's all the prayer cards for the day. I know I haven't done one, any of these in a while. So i um, put those down there. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, do the scripture songs again. And i uh, got to turn this back on because it turned off on me. So... All right, so here we go. Let me do this here. All right. <laughs> Oops. All right, okay, there you go. All right. <laughs> okay. So having a little fun here. Nothing wrong with that, you know. Amen. <laughs> okay, so put that there, and we'll do these scripture songs again, and then um, give you all the stuff for tomorrow. Okay, so here we go. Yesterday was the 23rd. So let's go back here to the 23rd and sing these scripture songs with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Okay. Proverbs 16, 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. 
When a man's ways please the Lord, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a man's ways please the Lord, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. All right, now today's one more time. Proverbs 17:22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit Try it, the bones. Hey, man. All right. So let's have a merry heart and uh, all that. So put that there. And that is about it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and the daily strength of books and then the hymns for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 25th. And Proverbs 2011 is the scripture song verse. And it says, Ever, or Even a child is known by his doings whether his work be pure, and whether it be right. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then the topic for the Baptist bread tomorrow will be titled... Let's get here. So title tomorrow for Tuesday, June 25th is titled, In Everything Give Thanks. And Psalms 100 verse 4 is the passage. And we'll read one, uh, Psalm 100's entirety. There's not a long psalm there. And then tomorrow's author is R.K., that would be the initials for R.K. Let's look here. That would be Randy Cruz. And he's the pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Stanwood, I.A. So he's the, the author for tomorrow's Baptist Spread topic. And then tomorrow in Daily Strength as we're continuing through this uh, weekly topic on hate. And so tomorrow is Day 143, Tuesday. And it says, Loving those who hate the Lord. And Second Chronicles 19, verse 2 is the... Uh, passage there and then the hymn for tomorrow is titled uh, let thoughtless thousands choose the road and not sure if there's an instrumental for this one though or if it's even in the book but we'll look it up if not we'll try to pick a different one for tomorrow and so that's the second uh, hymn there so hope we can find that in the book and an instrumental for that one and then the first hymn for tomorrow is going to be titled how can i keep from singing and that's the hymn and it's another one of these the singing of the saint hymns a spiritual song written by robert lowry and uh, he's the only author for this one and there's a lengthy story here at the bottom of the page so that would be the first hymn tomorrow so hope we can find one for that one or one of these so if not we'll do a third hymn so that's uh, the book there and this is the dark blue cover and then there's also a brown cover and a lighter bluish grayish cover and then there's also a leather bound edition and then there's a spinal uh, side backing edition which is would be this type of uh, side backing here which would replace this type of uh, backing so that's uh, uh, the different uh, versions of the hymn book there and then the daily strength volume 2 book this is the cover to that book and this is written by uh, brother Stoffer and brother Ray and uh, there's four volumes to this series of books and you can find those all on melodypublications.com is the website there for that and from, uh, for those books there and then um, I'm going to do the scripture song uh, book and CDs next this is the cover of the scripture song book and then the CDs should be able to find those online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com that's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana so pray for them and Brother Dean's health and all the pain he's been going through uh, with all the scar tissue that he's had, um, they won't do any more surgeries. They say it's too dangerous. And um, so he's just living with that and pray for him. And Sister Patty, as she's either back over there or getting ready to go back over there uh, to help with the VBS over there at the beginning of the month. 
and their VBS, so pray for that VBS over there, and all those that be going over uh, to help out with that. I know Brother Blake and Sister Haley Muscat are heading over there um, to help with that, along with uh, 10 others, and then there's 19 going over all together. I'm not sure who the others are, but um, I mentioned in the prayer letter, or you'll probably find out later, but uh, that's on the website there. So that's that information for the um, Scripture Song book and all that. And then the Baptist Spread uh, book. This is the cover from last month and this month. So if you order now, you'll get the one for July and August. And it comes in a box of 10. And it's twelve ninety-five Every other month, you'll get a box of these. And you can keep one for yourself and hand out the others uh, to other people. Or uh, leave it at the church house so people can grab a copy of it. And so that's that. Information at baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available to order if you check out that website there. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we should always be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and going to God in prayer and seeking his face and asking him to help you and guide you and direct you in all truth is your having a good relationship with him and learning to be more Christ-like every day and all that. So, And that's the Bible there, King James Bible. And then the other uh, broadcasts I've been doing, where I've been reading Brother James's book on Genesis, part of the Christ Honoring Commentary series, and it's a devotional type of book where he has different topics each and every day throughout the year. And we've reached the 24th, and today's topic is titled Striving for the Wells. So that will be the topic for today. On page 229 and 230 in the book, the copy I have. So if you have a copy of this book, you can follow along with me or you can take notes uh, when I do this uh, broadcast. And I usually do that pre-recorded and then upload it to both Facebook and the YouTube channel. And so again, um, this book can be found at uh, the church website, which is www.jameswnox.org. Or go straight to the store part of the website, which is store.jameswnox.org. And look up all his books there. Um, I said this might be available on that website still. And I'm still, I'm not sure if it's still in print or not. But when it comes back in print, it'll be a chapter by chapter, verse by verse commentary. Is what I've been told. So I'm not sure if these uh, topics will be put in there with that new uh, edition of the book. So if not, I'm sure you can find this somewhere or contact the church to get a copy of that book. But his other books, those are still in print, should still be up there to order along with other. Uh, material and stuff, including preaching and teaching from uh, from God's Word, and that includes Brother James's teaching, preaching, and teaching from other men um, uh, from the Sunday School Hour. And um, uh, speaking of other men, a uh, good message from Brother uh, J. Hill um, uh, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was Sunday, so good message from him on the Book of Acts. So check that out, and um, many other men that preach and teach God's Word during that uh, hour, and then uh, days when Brother James is. Uh, traveling to other uh, meetings and stuff so amen for for these men that uh, do do that so praise the lord all right so that's uh, that and then for um the youtube channel for me is ambassador for christ broadcasting or you can type in baptist bread broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when i'm posting these up on the youtube channel so and if you missed any of the ones from the genesis you uh, series of um devotionals there you can Check that out on YouTube. It might be easier to look these up on YouTube than trying to scroll down through the Facebook page. But however you watch it, um, might might uh, be okay for you to do that. So, um, But just want to give you an easier way to look those up. So, all right. Well, that's about it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you. Until next time, bye-bye for now.